Hello, this video is a bit of a practical explanation that I thought I'd add to the video I just made on uniform circular motion. It's a little bit different, but I think it will be interesting and uh, we can uh, expand upon these ideas. When we see airplanes in flight, we know that the way they turn is they bank their wings and, they f and then they gracefully turn. Birds do the same thing. So the question now is, <clears throat> let's understand perhaps a little bit of the physics of why this is what happens. When the airplane was first being invented about 120 or so years ago, the first idea was to build an airplane that was itself inherently stable. And, <clears throat> and that, that didn't quite work. And then two bicycle mechanics slash manufacturers from Dayton, Ohio, were used to riding a bicycle, which is somewhat stable, but requires the operator to constantly use some steering input to maintain the vehicle's balance. So they felt naturally with that mindset that the idea of the airplane would be better, would work more effectively if the pilot had control. And they had to play around with how to do that, <clears throat> they found that most of the research that was available was incorrect. And so they built their own wind tunnel and did their own research. What they found was by twisting the wings, what they called wing warping, uh, caused the plane to be able to turn under control. Now this was the precursor, of course, to the aileron, which is still used today, which was invented by one of their enemies, so to speak, uh, Glenn Curtis. <clears throat> so, but nevertheless, the idea they came up with is the center point here. Let's remind ourselves first, for the uninitiated, of the basic controls that a pilot has on an airplane and where they're located. And we won't get into the fancy stuff for now, that's not necessary. On a typical airplane, you have two I'll use orange just so you stand out a bit better. You have two control tabs on the wings. Now these are known as ailerons. You have two on the back of the empennage or tailplane. These are known as elevators. And you have one here at the back, <clears throat> vertical. This is known as the rudder. Now, an airplane is traveling through the air, it's fairly heavy, and it's generally traveling fairly quickly. Uh, even uh, a small recreational airplane is probably still traveling 150 to 200 kilometers an hour. Uh, so they're moving along quite a bit, and they weigh a few thousand pounds at least. And so to turn them is going to require a fair amount of force. <clears throat> so the airplane motion, just in general, don't always have to use a jetliner here, but the airplane has mass, <clears throat> including passengers, of thousands of pounds, in most cases. So even the smallest plane has an engine in it, it has a frame and wings and all the rest and wheels and two people, you know, that's not going to weigh 50 pounds, it's going to weigh a fair bit. Uh, they're traveling uh, rapidly. <clears throat> now this is for two reasons, one is that's the basic idea. Uh, it allows for a faster Transport. We have a certain patience for how long it takes us to move from A to B, and after a while, if that's taking too long, we look for a, a means to make that go faster. And this was the idea. We don't generally fly, uh, you know, uh, two or three kilometers uh, to to the local store. That would seem silly. But uh, we certainly fly between cities and things like that because those distances can be hundreds of kilometers 
and driving there could take hours and an airplane flight would be roughly roughly speaking 10 times faster uh, if you're taking a jet and the other thing the reason that they go rapidly of course is that you need to uh, when you're using a fixed-wing aircraft you have to go a certain speed to create enough lift okay so there's The airplane's wings, <clears throat> through a couple of means, it in fact deflect air downward. Uh, now they generally don't deflect air downward, just straight down, they generally create a vacuum on the wing, but I digress. Uh, but it is of course caused by the motion of the wing through the air forced by the engines. And this does mechanical work on the air, and the air pushes down on the, or the wings push down on the air, pardon me, and the air then pushes up on the wings. And if you can create by these mechanical situations, difference in pressure, you get adequate lift to keep the airplane um, at altitude. And of course, this changes with elevation too, because the higher you go, the thinner the air. So um, the higher we go, generally, is faster. Now, this obviously depends on the type of airplane and all the rest of it. But these are some basic points. <clears throat> now back to the central point then of turning an airplane, we have these things that have a lot of kinetic energy. And if we're going to turn it, we're going to have to do a fair amount of work on the airplane to get it to turn. This is going to take a fair amount of work uh, to do so. So a significant force uh, is required for some time to redirect motion now if you look at an airplane um, we have to recognize this is a very important constraint here these ideas I just given you and that we're gonna to have to have pretty significant force here okay if we have let's suppose uh, 50 meters per second to take a rough estimate on speed squared it's 2500 and then you add you know, a few thousand kilos of mass, even if it's just one, okay, looking at 2.5 million joules. Now, we're not trying to stop it, but we're trying to change the uh, velocity vector, and we have to do work on both directions, if you will, to get that to happen, and this is going to take fairly significant forces. Now, if we look at the wings, and we look at the airplane, these small control tabs here, uh, while they can change the orientation of the airplane, they are nowhere near big enough to create that motion. So, the, what we call the control surfaces can alter the airplane's orientation. So we could have pitch, so our airplane uh, would go in this direction, the nose up or down, uh, roll, the one that makes the most sense is you have your wings and the controls the bank of the wings. The one that's least understood is yaw, <clears throat> so here's your airplane and this is a rotation this way this is something that's hard to understand because with a car or something like that if you turn your wheels the car immediately goes around the corner because you have a tremendous amount of friction with the tires and the pavement but the problem in the air is that when you change the elevator the uh, rudder's position and the airplane does yaw okay this has nothing there's no there's no friction here of consequence that's going to cause that plane to change direction 
even though when you yaw it, it changes the direction, if you will, of the propeller or the jet engines, which will help a little bit. You still have an enormous amount of forward momentum. And this small input here is not going to change it very much. It's basically going to continue almost in the same direction, uh, uh, sideways a little bit, which is going to be less efficient. There'll be some turning, but it's not going to be very much. And, and so then the question is, well, how do, how, do we, how do we do this? And well, we have to look at the most profound control surface, if you will, we have, and that's the wings. The wings provide lift, as I mentioned earlier, and they, live, they keep the aircraft in the air if it's traveling at an appropriate speed. So let's have a look and see what we can divine from this. <clears throat> if an airplane is traveling uh, straight level, so we'll just say level flight, then the force of lift is equal to the force of gravity of this airplane. And, and you can fly in cruises a long time, uh, and that's just fine. But now we want to turn. So the aircraft's going to try and do something like this. Now we have to maintain altitude. But we have to input a force, let's say significant force, let's be very clear about this. Uh, in the direction of the turn. So we need to steal some of the energy, some of the form of the force that the wings provide. But we must also maintain altitude. So this seems a little bit tricky uh, also, uh, and so this is done by banking the airplane. And typically the limits are in the neighborhood of 32 or so degrees. <clears throat> We're not going to talk about aerobatics and all that kind of stuff. So the bank is not generally aggressive. Airplanes are restricted, but they have limitations on how much banking can do at certain speeds. You might have a plane here, for example, flying level and flying along at certain some speed, and you bank it aggressively and the plane will stall like an aerodynamically because its maneuvering speed is higher. So you have to be careful about those limitations. But we'll just assume we're basically on normal sets of circumstances. So we'll take a 25 degree bank And we have the gravity force pointing down, and we have a lift force now that's pointed in this direction, because my wings are now pointed this way. I want a component of my lift vector that's going to be enough to do the job. So we'll just call this lift altogether here. Uh, because that's what, well, actually, let's say the force of the wing here, for example. So then the force of lift is going to be equal to, so let's take this angle in here, theta. That's the bank angle. When that's zero, the plane's level flight. Now that's 25 degrees. So the lift force will be the wing force times the cosine of 25 degrees. On the other hand, we have this force here, if you will, is pushing against the air. That's going to be, if you will, our turn force. It's pushing the air, the air is pushing the airplane. Now, we don't have a gravity force opposing the turn. So if you have a non turnable force like this pushing, it's going to go there. Okay? So the lift force is opposed by the force of gravity. But the turning force 
which is going to be Fw sine of theta, 25 in this case, is unopposed. Now let's look at our values here. So we're going to have sine 25 and cos 25. So we'll pull out the old calculator here. I'm going to get 0 0.906 and for sine 25 we get about 0 0.426. Now, this is the secret as to why banking works. I bake my airplane only 25 degrees. I'm still retaining almost 91% of my lift. I might have to raise my nose slightly to increase uh, the angle of attack, to increase the effectiveness of the wings. Maybe, if necessary, put a little bit of power on, but not very much. Because I'm already at 91%. I haven't given up hardly anything. However, through the magic of trigonometry, the force that's pushing me around my corner is fully 42.5% of my entire wing force. It's, it's truly amazing how this works because of the magic of trig, these things don't add to 100. Okay, You get way more than you're supposed to. I laughed when I first showed this to my students a few years ago. One of my students, when we looked at this at the board, he looked up and he goes, but that's cheating, which I love as a comment. But here's the example. So you have this lift pretty much maintained a very significant force pushing you in the direction that you want to go. And that's with a non trivial bank. A lot of times you don't even need 25 degrees. It'll depend on how abrupt the turn is. But a lot of times, if you're just making subtle changes, you might only bank 5 degrees or something, or even 10 degrees, and then only for a comparatively short period of time. So this is pretty amazing because the uh, wing force is going to have to be enough to hold the plane up and a little bit more perhaps at times. And so that's pretty significant if the plane weighs a couple thousand kilos or even a thousand kilos perhaps if it's a small plane. Uh, this is very significant and now you're getting 42% of that. So that's you know in the neighborhood of 4,000 newtons and 4,000 newtons acting on on a, on a thousand kilogram plane is going to give you a non-trivial acceleration. And that's why you feel it when you go, when an airplane banks, you, you feel it in the seat because uh, you're getting, you know, an acceleration that is fairly significant. And uh, so this is kind of the magic of it, uh, how this works. And again, this is just really basic stuff here because obviously planes can be optimized and you can be all kinds of neat little sidelines done to these things. But, uh, but the basic principle is right here. Also, of course, when the plane banks, it will yaw a little bit. So we have to use the foot pedals to control that, and that makes the plane fly cleaner, uh, which is something that you want to, to do. Uh, you know, when you're flying, of course, there's nothing else to, to uh, make it more controllable and to save gasoline or whatever else along those lines. But uh, <clears throat> so you can see here, we can maintain altitude and yet get a very, very significant input. But just remember, going back, so the rudder here is simply to maintain the yaw it is not here to turn the plane like a boat's rudder would, for example. Uh, a boat's rudder is in the water and can push very hard against a very dense material like water. And the density of air is less than a hundredth of that of water. And there's no way you're going to get that kind of, of purchase with it. So uh, in addition to the math, I love to talk about applications and how things fit into what we're trying to learn. Hopefully you found this small talk here interesting. Thank you for watching my channel.